I realize there's a million and one videos out there on how to install these LED retrofit tubes. I'm going to show you a real easy approach to installing these and anyone can do this approach. Keep watching and find out how. That's up next. Okay, well thanks for uh, joining me on this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take the opportunity to do so. And when you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell. That will ensure you get notified of any new content that comes available on this channel. The tube that I'm installing today is a Hypericon. These tubes can last 20 plus years depending on use, eliminating need to uh, constantly replace your bulbs like you do with these fluorescent fixtures. These bulbs are truly the safest and the smartest lighting choice. There's no mercury, there's no UV or IR radiation. They are made with shatterproof materials and there's minimal heat output. These particular bulbs are equivalent to 48 watts but they only use 18 watts of power. These bulbs are ballast compatible, which means you can take the old fluorescent tubes out and replace them with these tubes without removing any of the wiring or the ballast. I would not recommend you do that. If you take out the ballast and direct wire these things, you're gonna save about 70% on the electric draw. So it's well worth doing the ballast removal and it's really easy and straightforward. You know these bulbs are quality because they come with a hassle-free, unlimited five-year warranty. That is something that's fairly rare in the industry. So as you can see, I'm a fan of these bulbs. I installed a set of these down in the basement. In addition to the energy savings, I like the fact that they're so much brighter and they're instant on. I will leave a link in the description below so that you can check these out and I would highly recommend that you purchase these. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. There's seven steps to install. First, you just simply want to make sure you turn off the electricity at the breaker. After you've done that, check the wall switch, turning it on to make sure that you've gotten the right breaker switch and then turn it back off so that you know that you're safe. Once you've opened up your fixture, the first thing you wanna do is cut your wires right near the ballast uh, so that you have maximum length on your wires. Next, you want to remove your bulbs before removing the ballast. That way you ensure that uh, you don't accidentally knock out a tube and break one. At next step, go ahead and physically remove your ballast. It's very easy to do. I'll show you how to do that as well. With the ballast removed, then you can simply strip your wires. With your wire stripped, I would urge you to have some sort of quick connect. Uh, I use a quick connect that has eight slots in it you'll have two pairs of red, two pairs of yellow, two pairs of blue on each end, and then you'll need another slot for either your neutral white wire or your uh, hot black wire. So one side is gonna be all wired to the white wire, and the opposite side will be wired to the black wire. Uh, so you simply strip the six wires on each side stick those six wires into the quick connect and then attach one side to the neutral and the other side to the hot. And that's really it. You just tidy up your wires, put on the cover, reinstall your bulbs and reassemble your fixture and you're good to go. So let me go ahead and show you how to install these. Step one, once identifying the proper breaker, disconnect your light from the power source using the breaker. Step two, verify that the electrical source is off by attempting to turn the light on. Return the light switch to the off or neutral position. With the power off to the light, you're ready to begin. Fortunately, with my kitchen, I have my receptacles on a different circuit. So that way I can plug in this trouble light to give me sufficient lighting in order to complete this job. And I'm well lit for the job. Okay, for step three, using my Greenlee wire cutters, I'm going to cut all wires next to the ballast. So starting over here,
Okay, next step, prior to removing the two ballast, I'm gonna remove the uh, fluorescent tubes. Okay, with those fluorescent tubes out, I'll go ahead and remove the ballast. So on both sides, I have two pair of red, two pair of blue, and two pair of yellow. So I spared you the uh, process of uh, stripping each one of those wires. I have a Wago Quick Connect that has eight holes in it. And so to connect this side, it's just a matter of sticking the neutral or the white into this Quick Connect and we have one side connected. All I have to do is repeat that same thing on the other side, connecting to the, the black or hot wire, and we're ready to install the new bulbs. Okay, I got both sides wired in. You can see my two connectors on both sides. I did have to put a black wire to extend this one because these wires were a little shorter on this side, but we're ready to test. I already installed a single bulb in here and now I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch and let's see how it does. Okay, it appears to be working fine. Uh, so we'll go ahead and install the remaining bulbs. So one final note uh, before you fully reassemble your fixture, you want to make sure that you use these provided stickers that come into the box and put them in a couple conspicuous places on your fixture to remind folks to replace with an LED lamp only and uh, that they should use the double-ended ballast compatible LED light tubes. So with this light retrofit project completed, just want to remind you that I'll leave links below. This is a quality bulb that I'm sure uh, it'll be something that won't disappoint. I want to thank you for watching today. Remind you to hit that subscribe button for more interesting content and we'll see you next time.